Well, it's good to be in the pulpit again, and uh, we are moving through three weeks down, and now this is the fourth week beginning. So once once this is complete, we're quarter way through the semester. Isn't that amazing? It is just crazy. It is absolutely crazy how fast the time moves by when, when at least from my perspective, when I'm involved with teaching. And it's a big warning to me because I've got all sorts of things that have to be done. And um, so this, this keeps me honest, I tell you. I can see the time going. And uh, we have a, Sepi and I, we have been absolutely enjoying the weather just recently. And yesterday we went out to uh, the dam area of Lake Thunderbird. We went there in the morning and we went again in the evening. And both times were just ma, absolutely gorgeous. One of the most gorgeous things I've seen. And I've seen some beautiful things around the world. And especially in New Zealand, there's some, some very beautiful places. But I tell you what, just at this time, could hardly beat Lake Thunderbird. And the, the boats and the birds and the, everything going on there. It's just, and the deer. And there's something else going in the woods there. It sounded not quite right. Something going on there. I don't know what's going on in there, but something is crunching through the woods there. I don't know what it might be. I've seen some unusual things out at Thunderbird as far as animal life. And usually at a distance, and because my eyes are not so good, I can't say for sure, so I don't want to publicize that I saw something that what really wasn't what, it, what I think it was. But there are some unusual animals around, I'm telling you. They are there. And I know there are bears around in Oklahoma. And I read how there was a bear sighted just recently, not far away from where we live actually not too far away and I know there's some down south on the eastern ed edge of uh, Oklahoma so who knows these things might be moving through and coming closer well let's pray our God and Father we thank thee for this time we've got together to meet to open the scriptures to learn we thank thee for the book of Proverbs which is filled with wisdom we ask Lord that we'd uh, always consider the scriptures rightly divided that we may uh, live a better and edifying life. Pray for our relatives, friends, and people who are unwell, Lord, that your healing hand be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, last time we have been looking at um, this whole business of my son and the structure of Proverbs. And I've read this again and again. And um, most of the chapters I just keep reading, 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 and I keep seeing more and more and more as I read and uh, really I've come to a completely new perspective about Proverbs. I used to just think that yeah you could just dip into this book and take anything you want and get some uh, teaching that, that would be relevant and it certainly is true there will be found many things that are relevant but if you want to understand the precise teaching and who it's addressing you must get the scope by the structure of this and this my son as you can see the pronouns thy and uh, thee thou thine uh, when you see the structure and you see that this uh, indicates that the wise men are addressing someone who is an authority someone who's a prince or a king such as Solomon you begin to see that for example for the uh, first nine chapters basically what you've got is instruction going on for Solomon and then you begin to see well, oh okay now I can see why this really makes sense especially when you see the uh, strange women coming into the picture here and that there is this alternation going on one is the wonderful lady the lady uh, Kokmo, I got her Hebrew word here. Here she is. And in the New Testament, she comes in as He Sophia. Feminine, see? He Sophia. We even use names of uh, girls today. Sophia uh, is a reasonably common name. I've uh, just been working on uh, some, some new data that I got, which is on uh, baby names. Baby names. And it's kind of interesting because there's a there's a culture of baby names and uh, so some names become popular at various times and then they become less popular for whatever reason and uh, so it is with some 
names like Sophia. Now, I haven't actually looked for Kokma, which I'm going to do now that I think about it. I'm going to check that out with that same data set because it goes right back to the turn of the century. So it's quite interesting to see the names and how they change. So you notice here you've got the words of the wise for Solomon, for a prince, a king. And we're looking at that at the moment, and this is showing you how the expression my son appears right throughout uh, the book of Proverbs. And here is this neat repeated alternation, wisdom's call, the foreign woman. Wisdom's call, the foreign woman. Obviously, there is a pattern. Obviously, there is a structure there. And that's not a surprise because this is the word of God not a surprise at all and it's a literary structure one person asked me one time well isn't this just made up I mean it's just made up no it's a literary structure you find these words in the scripture you, you have to agree to it because it's there it's not like uh, oh I'm just going to make up this nice little alternation no it's really there and so we were looking at all kinds of things to do with uh, the way of this strange woman and her paths are unto death and her house inclineth unto death. And we're looking at the way that the strange woman were actually used, the Canaanitish women were used by the angels uh, to bring in all kinds of Nepalim. And uh, they came and were prevalent in the days before the flood and also after that. And so we, we've looked at some of the notes and I pointed out that the com Companion Bible is really good for giving you some in, uh, insight into this. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, this is a big chapter and Proverbs 3 and 4 they go together. And Proverbs 3 and 4 are all about wisdom's call. Wisdom's call. And it's a very interesting idea that wisdom that she would call out to you and would want you to find her. So there is this idea of the, of the wisdom's call. Now behind all this is this, yeah, I got the right verses this time. <laughs> uh, this is a really interesting thing that Proverbs what it does is it addresses many of the issues, especially when it comes to these ad addresses where it talks from the perspective of, of my son, where the wise men address Solomon. Because what they bring up are many issues that you find already addressed by Moses about wisdom for the king and what to do and what not to do in order that they don't compromise and go back into the the Egyptian fortress and all that it offered them but rather to, to lean on God and accept his ways so these things that we just read in our reading previously are brought in by the wise men into Proverbs very interesting now let's just go across to Proverbs 3 in verse 1 it says my son forget not my law forget not my law so you think now of a Solomon or any prince someone in authority forget not my law and when people are to enact laws right here in this country they need to consider what is right before God first of all and there have been some terrible laws that have been put into place and fortunately we've seen some of God's wisdom coming forward in those laws being repealed which is really good to see isn't it when we see that God's law being uh, considered uh, but let thine heart keep my commandments thine heart it's a heart thing isn't it you see if your heart is away from the things of God eventually it's going to come out now you may have some sort of appeal to people but if your heart is not with God eventually it's going to come out and it's going to be seen it's a hard thing and people who we put into office we need to make sure they have a heart for God 
first of all. And if they show that they don't have a heart for God, then we should not vote for them. They do not have to be perfect because none of us are. Let's not pretend, right? But they should have a heart which is for God and His ways and His law. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. For length of days and long life and peace, peace shall they add to thee. Now, I'm going to admit something. I got this wrong. I said to Seppi before I came, man, I'm glad I caught myself out on this. And this is brought out for us beautifully by Bullinger's Companion Bible. When it says they, see, look in verse 2. Shall they add to thee? It is most natural. It is very natural for your, your eyes to go back to keep my commandments. Right? They, and shall they add to thee? It's very natural to put the, the law and the commandments in there. Not the law and commandments of verse 1. For they are feminine. So this is, some, this is something which is what a bit of knowledge of language can help you with. That's wisdom, right? That's a form of wisdom. Don't ever think that wisdom, that, which the Bible talks about, is only of one form. Solomon had a certain kind of wisdom, which was quite technical in areas. Had to do with animal husbandry, right? He had some technical knowledge there. Technical knowledge about agriculture. And that was wisdom. God counted it as wisdom. God counted a special kind of wisdom that the Egyptians had and recognized that wisdom and talked of it as the wisdom of Egypt. It's not all evil. Not all of the wisdom of Egypt was evil. They had technical knowledge. There were artificers. There were people that could work with rock. Do you know that the Lord used those, some of those people from foreign nations to build his temple? He used them because they had a certain wisdom, which was real wisdom of a kind. Okay, so look at this. Grammar is also a wisdom. They, not the law and commandments of verse 1, for they are feminine, but the days of verse 2, which are masculine, agreeing with the verb add, which is masculine also. All right? This is the hephel make increase for thee, to cause thee to increase or grow in wisdom, as the days and years lengthen. Now here it comes. As the days and years lengthen and increase, they will add to thy wisdom. If thou forget not, so in other passages where wisdom is supposed to promise long life, which it does not, and he gives reference to other notes. What it's talking about is as the days, as your days grow longer, so you have that opportunity to grow in wisdom, to grow also in wisdom. So it says here, for length of days and long life and peace shall they, that's the long days, add to thee. Do you see the point? And that, that's kind of, kind of an interesting thing there, right? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. And you're going to see them there, man. Or you're going to feel them. You know, dogs are strange things. They will rub stinky stuff all around their neck and they'll, they'll come up to some stinky stuff and rub their neck into it and it just ah stinky stuff when i was uh, working on a farm we used to have problems with uh stillborn calves or in the birth process maybe of a, a cow that's having its first calf things can go wrong and and the the calf might be born dead and but because it's gone through this birth process it has a full udder of milk. So what are you going to do with a cow that's, its calf is dead, but it's got a full udder of milk? Well, you're either going to milk it out, or you will get another calf to drink it. 
And what many farmers do is the, the latter, but the trouble is the cow will not accept that new calf many times. Many times, get away from me. And the calf's hungry and will try and get to the other, but the, the cow, you're not mine, get away from me. So what do you do? Well, what, what I used to do was I'd get a sharp knife and I'd go to the dead calf and I'd cut a strip off its neck strip of skin, tie that around the neck of the, the calf that I'm trying to get the cow to accept, and sniff that neck there, and yeah, okay, <laughs> and we'd trick it, and it would finally accept this new calf, and the new calf would take of the milk, and so on. Well, here we've got something interesting here, okay, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart, so that so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Isn't that interesting? It says here, in the sight of God and man. Paul uses this expression also. He wants you to do good in the sight of God and man. There is a, there is a witness before man too, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Oh, this is a famous passage. This is the one you find written on walls and stuff. It's a very famous passage. No doubt about it. Now, the Hebrew word for direct here is yasha. Yasha. And I've given a concordance for it. But it's interesting to see how if you took the Hebrew words... And you, then you translate it into Greek. How would you translate it? Well, I don't know myself, but there were some translators that did that with, uh, with the whole Old Testament, and it's called the LXX. And so in Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways make known him in order that he should direct your paths. See here? Direct. Author to muo. It's come from this same word we use, rightly divide. Rightly divide. That it's so that he, in order that he would rightly divide your paths. Rightly divide. Second Timothy 2.15 is getting right in here, my friends. Right in here. Trust in the Lord with all thine hearts and lean not under thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct, direct thy path. Direct. Interesting that we translate that direct into English, right? Direct. Direct. Die. Two. Or, we have it in words like divide, right? Divide. Rect. Rect. Rectangle. Rectangles. We've got these right angles in there. Rect. German. Rectangle. Hmm. Okay. Right division, my friends. Rightly dividing. Rightly dividing. Whenever you take anything, my friends, and you cut it, you divide it. Immediately, you'll get two things. Right. Division is here. Don't you think this is quite an amazing thing that right in here, with wisdom's call, there is the implied need that you rightly divide the word of truth. If you want to get wisdom, if you want to hear her voice, if you want the spirit of wisdom to come to you, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. You have to, my friends. And in turn, he shall direct your paths. You get it coming back to you. You get good direction. Like, for example, how do you pray? How do you worship? Should you speak in tongues? What covenant are you a part of? Have you been grafted into the olive of Israel? What is your hope? You see? Don't tell me it doesn't matter, because right there I've just nailed it, haven't I? Right? Right there. 
It's right where we as Christians live. Who are you going to listen to? Are you going to la listen to Lady Chokmah? And hear her words, because here they are, and her words right in here involve this idea of right division. Man, we get people commenting on our videos on YouTube. And the issue is very clearly right division, getting it right. And how do you know you're getting it right? And it says in here in verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall rightly divide thy path. Well, we'll rightly divide the word of truth and we'll take his wisdom and in turn, we're going to get the right paths evident to us. That's what we want in life, man. You come to forks in the road all the time. Let's be honest. And sometimes without due consideration to lady wisdom, we'll take the wrong path. It's a good idea to say, yep, mate, that was a blue, man. That was a blue. We made a mistake. Or I made a mistake. I went down the wrong path. Sometimes that path can be just a sheer cliff. It can be pretty drastic. Might be a big grizzly waiting at the end of that one. <laughs> we just bought some um, pepper spray. It's pretty cool. Some of that stuff is really good. You can get some uh, beer pepper spray, which comes in a quite a big, like a almost like one of these fire extinguishers, quite a big one. And you hit on that baby, man, a big cloud of this stuff comes out. I was saying to Seppi, make sure you're facing in the right direction. <laughs> Be pretty bad for it to come back at you, and there's a big beer looking at you. And you <laughs> can't see a thing. Anyway, so this is cool. This is very cool. So in here, you've got this instruction. If you look at verse 7, it's, it says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Notice here in verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Yeah, because you see, if, you, if you're just going to make stuff up on, uh, based upon what you see, what you see is often influenced by what you want. What you want, that's what you see. And you'll make your so-called wisdom conclusions on what you see with your own eyes. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel. The navel is where you are connected to your mum. Umbilical cord goes on to the placenta and there the all of the nutrients go from the mother through that umbilical cord and feeds the whole body of the person. It shall be health to thy navel. Yeah. Health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. All of the goodness. All of that which makes... When you look at a young, younger person, okay? <laughs> younger person who is eating the right foods and is exercising and doing all the right things. What do you notice about that young person? Jumps around. Have you seen a little kid? Have you ever seen a little kid just walking? They, they, they run everywhere, right? They run everywhere. I saw a beautiful little baby in front of us when we were doing some shopping and it, it looked back at us and smiled. You know what it's like. And uh, they're just full of health full of vitality it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones yeah because you see with the right kind of wisdom that's what happens now here's something I'm well, it's wise right to make the right choices for what you eat it's wise for you to make the right choices for what you drink right that's wise and here is the element that the world is not considering. Considering God and understanding what He wants for your life is going to be health, man. There's health in there. I truly believe it. And I, when I say health, I'm not only simply talking about your spiritual well-being, I'm talking about your body. 
your body, really, that there will be health there available. Now remember how this literature is written. It's written in this context here for Solomon and for those in places of authority. The first instance and in taking right division seriously, that's the first application. That if you're going to serve and you want to live long and you want to do these things, you better consider God's ways and show wisdom in all these areas. And then in charge of this will be God who will help you live a healthy life. It says, verse 9, Honor the Lord with all with thy substance and with the f first fruits of all thine increase. Now, amongst Israel, they did that. They took the best to be offered to God. And in that, there's a good picture for us in our lives. And when we were younger people, how did you, how did you react to God? You say, well, uh, my service to God is for later on in life. No, your service to God is right now, man. You give the best to God, the first fruits. Your youth, give to God. Many people, I've noticed, want to put off their service to God. They want to put that away and say, oh, that's when I can't do anything else. No, you give the best. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall be burst out with new wine. Yeah, in general, that will be true. That's the promise to the leader, the person in charge, the king. Put God first, and he's going to take care of the nation. He's going to make sure there's provision for you. Right? I think we've seen that with the United States when, they, when the United States in the early stages when the leadership gave honor to God. They must have given honor to God. Just go to Washington D.C. and look at all those ancient memorials and they've got scripture all over them. Right? Must be. Don't try and lie about this and tell our students some revised history of the United States trying to expunge the wisdom of God that the, the original people who came here, the founders had. They were not perfect. They were not all strong Christians. But they knew where the truth was and they respected it. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. And I'm showing you in here places where in chapter 3 things were quoted by Paul, James, and Peter. How come? Because what they did was they extracted from here wise things for leadership as people who were responsible as leaders. Paul, James, and Peter. Great. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. You see, if you look at the enemies of Israel, they took advantage of the fact that time, there were times when Israel was definitely chastened of God. I mean, they, God gave them a good beating. But that doesn't mean to say that God's going to go back on the promises that He's given Israel. He's going to bring them in, man. The, the train is going to pull in, man. It's coming. And just because some of the forefathers, some of the people involved with Israel, the nation itself, were led astray at times, will not change the fact that God has set a seal on them and He's going to bring that train in even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Ah, here it comes. And the man that getteth understanding. You notice the way that this is written. See how it says, and, and, yea, or even. Yea, or even. The man that getteth understanding. Wisdom and understanding are very much related. They're related in the sense that wisdom just takes that understanding in a very sharp and careful way of putting it in place. It becomes practical understanding. It gets used. It means you can make real decisions. And these people who have been addressed here, all these people such as Solomon, people who are in charge, they must get this understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She, look at that, 
She is more precious than rubies. Who is the she? She is Lady Kokma. She is Lady Wisdom. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Man, you, can you see? If we had people like that in charge of our societies, people were put in position within government and they made decisions like this and they were after that kind of lady, the Lady Cockman, not the other one. <laughs> not the other one, man, that's standing out there, come on. We've seen that. No, no. This is Lady Wisdom, the one that they need to come to. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. In the end, the soul will be preserved. God will do it. And if you need riches, that is, if your nation needs riches, it'll come. But if you put it in the wrong order, if you put riches first, no, it won't happen. You'll get corruption in the right order. First of all, you care for Lady Kokhma. You desire her. And then later on, all kinds of provisions will come. Things get put into place. Clarity of mind means good decisions economically as well, right? Get that first. Get that right first. And then other decisions come, correct? Look at this. Verse 17, her ways are ways of pleasantness. Have you noticed how unpleasant the society is at the moment? It is very unpleasant, man. And a lot of the ideas are against Lady Wis Wisdom. They're all about being subverted by people who have always wanted to bring America down. The communists, for example, have made serious inroads. Serious inroads. And a lot of the ideas to do with wokeness are being promoted by the communists. And they are just, yeah, we're getting our way, man. Do you think the communists in China are putting wokeness into practice? No. Do you know what I've just read? I've read. you know what they're doing? They're pumping their soldiers full of testosterone. Their average height has increased by three inches, the men. Three inches. But what are they promoting here? Femininity. Make the men more like women. Isn't that true? That's what's going on, man. And it's responsible to face up to it and call it out from the pulpit. No, I am not giving any kind of apology to those who have come to listen to this message and you're getting this. No apology, friend. You're going to get it straight. Because that's what's going on in this country. This country is being destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Look what it says here. Verse 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Think about the tree of life, friends. When Adam and Eve were first formed, they had access to the tree of life. Do you think that Adam and Eve wouldn't hurt themselves, stumble over something, trip on a rock, hit something sharp? Of course, they would. And guess what? The tree of life was there for them. They could get healing from it, right? But when sin entered into the world, and death by sin, they were moved out of the garden and there was a flaming cherubim that was placed there with a flaming sword turning every which way, stopping them from going back to the tree of life that they could live forever as sinners. What? This is interesting. She is a tree of life to them, but them are sinners, right? The tree of life is open. It's open to those who will seek after her. To them that lay hold upon her. Active. Act. You've got to lay hold of her. She's calling, man. But you've got to lay hold of her. You've got to grab her. I'm talking to you men. When you men, you saw that woman that you said, yep, she's, that's mine right there. I want her. 
I want to marry her. And you pursued and will you marry me? Yes. And happy days, right? Happy days. It happened. Okay. Don't let Lady Kokma get by anyone here. We need to go for her big time. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. All of the great things were done through a special kind of wisdom that God himself put into place. And we need to seek after this wisdom because that's a tree of life, man. And even though we are sinners, hey, we've got access to the tree of life in the person of Lady Kokma. And let's grab her. Put her in place in our lives. We can't go through all these passages because we don't have time. But you notice as you go down, it says this in verse uh, 31. Uh, 30. Strive not with a man without cause, if, if he have done thee no harm. Isn't that great? comes a balance here. Don't strive with anyone if they've done you no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward, that's the perverse, is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. The just will seek out Lady Kokma. The just will institute right division. The just will have the ways provided, the right ways provided for them. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Isn't that wonderful? Some humility you need in this life too. You've seen some of the, some, some of the wonderful examples of wise men and women. Humility is there. They understand that they are nothing. God is everything. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. <laughs> what I love about this book, man, it's straight. It's straight down the line. You want to be a leader, you want to be a person of influence, man, this book is for you. And it starts off with right division. Right division, friends. Very practical. Well, let us pray. Our God and Father, we thank Thee today for that which has been instructed to us. We thank Thee for the metaphor of uh, Lady Wisdom in the person of Kukma. And we thank Thee, our Father, that we have the Scriptures before us preserved, that we can read and understand and rightly divide. We pray for wisdom as we go through this life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.